Welcome to Yoga and Dreams. This is our first episode here on Wednesday night at Carioca Bowls and Full Lotus Classical Yoga by Donation on Alberta Street here in Portland, Oregon. Tonight we will be doing yoga for deep relaxation with Sprout and friends. Thank you for joining us. So we'll start with some big deep breaths. And it's nice to just feel your connection with the earth below. And also kind of set aside any worry stress that you might be feeling. Feel nice and calm and centered and in the present moment. So, thank you, Zila. We'll bring the hands together and press the palms together firmly, taking a big deep breath. And now you might want to set an intention for your practice. So this can be something simple, like you like to work on relaxation, stress coping skills, or it can be something more general like focusing on an intention of planetary healing. Or well, not attention. See healing. It's beautiful. And so, take a moment to think about that. Fingertips up towards the ceiling, looking up, lengthening even more. And then making two fists, we'll rotate the wrists as they float down. And then scooping back up with the arms, take a big inhale, really fill the lungs. To the hands together again, and then we're going to take the fingertips back behind the head or even down between the shoulder blades, getting a big stretch for the shoulders and the tricep muscles, still sitting nice and tall. Big breath here. You'll notice sometimes I close my eyes, that just allows me to turn my focus inward a little bit. So you're welcome to close your eyes whenever you want to during your practice. We'll reach up again, looking up. And bring the hands to heart center. Also about the breathing, I will sometimes remind you to take a big breath. Generally, we want the breath to be natural. I'm not always going to direct it. Um, natural and through the nose with long, slow breaths is our general breathing pattern for yoga, and this is very calming. Bring the hands a little lower now, relaxing the arms. See if you can keep them connected as they come closer to the navel. A little stretch for the wrists and forearms here. Big breath. And then we'll turn the hands around, letting the backs of the hands connect, the fingers and maybe even the thumbs touching. Again, a little stretch for the wrists. always seeking balance and so one way that we do this is we try to do everything equally on both sides of the body so having sat in this basic easy seated pose with one foot in the front we'll now switch so that the other foot will be in the front and sitting nice and tall let's begin to make a little circle with the heart Sufi rolls or Bumi rolls, also called mortar and pestle. And you can imagine a mortar and pestle perhaps grinding healing herbs. The circle can stay small or it can get quite big if that feels good. And we'll go both directions. Circle with the heart. So these are some nice warm-ups. Remember that the physical part of yoga practice, the asana practice, is really preparation for meditation. So we want to move the body, stretch out the kinks, and prepare so that we can really relax and find stillness. I'm raising my arms again. 
and this time I'm finding one elbow and the fingertips of the other hand are reaching down between the shoulder blades. So it's like you have an itch in the middle of your back that you want to scratch. Still sitting tall, big breath. Again, opening the shoulders. And we'll open the arms and try that on the other side. So just finding the other elbow and again reaching out the middle of the back, big breath. reaching straight out the sides and then maybe even opening a little more so the fingertips reach back behind the back and then we're going to bring one arm across the body so as we bring it across the shoulder comes forward and my hand is between the shoulder and the elbow as I draw that arm in across the ribcage and wave the fingers a little bit and take a big breath so the shoulders have a lot of range of motion and also tend to carry a lot of tension and stiffness. So there's a lot of different ways we can stretch the shoulders. That's a good place to start. We'll open up again, expanding. Expand the rib cage here. Take a big breath. And another arm drawing in. Using the hand to bring it right in close to the rib cage and let that shoulder move forward. Breathing can wave the fingers a little. the floor so you can touch the floor wherever it feels comfortable. Take a breath, lengthen the spine, tip the tailbone back a little bit, and then if it feels good, you can walk the fingertips out as far as you feel comfortable with today. Take a big breath, finding a nice hold at the hips. And as you relax, you might soften your elbows a little, keep looking forward. to listen to your body. So anything that I suggest is always optional. You can always do it your own way. You can modify. You can feel free to ask questions and honor your body. We'll go ahead and relax the legs and now point the toes. Take a big breath. So if something isn't feeling good, you can skip it, change it. You want your yoga practice to good before, during, and after. <laughs> and relaxing the legs, we're going to reach up, engaging the core. Take a breath here. And leaning to one side, reaching out. Really feel the core working. Keep the spine long. I say that a lot, and that's because we tend to let the spine collapse and round a lot, and over the years we get a lot of wear and tear on the spine, so it's really healthy to keep lengthening, keep reaching out. We'll come to the other side, leaning, reaching, arms are soft. We're going to make this movement a little bigger this time as we come back to the other side. One arm will rest on the leg, palm up, and the other arm reaching even farther if that feels good. Big side stretch. Expand the side of the ribcage. 
length on both sides of the torso here. And back to center. Other side, that big side stretch. Gazing upward. Back to center, we're going to bring both feet in, use your core to do it, and bring the soles of the feet together, and you can take a moment to move the toes around, use your thumbs to press into the soles of the feet, and so you can just give them a little massage, you can move them around, whatever feels nice, we'll use the leg muscles to bring the knees up, squeeze them in. So here we are using the elbows to deepen the stretch. So the elbows press the legs toward the floor, hinging forward with a nice fold at the hips. And if you like, you can have your feet quite close in, or you can have them further out, and that facilitates coming a little deeper into it. So here it's okay to round the back, and you can actually bring the head down to touch the toes if that works for you. That is called Shakti and Shiva Kiss. But you never want to force this. You want to relax into it, take your time, and work on it over time, and you'll find it becomes easier. So it's fine to stay a little higher, a little more extended, if that feels better for you today. So we're going to go ahead and come to standing. And the way that I like to do this is to come to a squat first. And here you can use your cushion for support if squat is a challenging pose for you. So this, using the cushion, helps you get used to this position. Um, but you don't have to use it. So you can also adjust whether you like your feet wide or close together. You can use your elbows to widen the knees. And again, try to sit up nice and straight. And draw in on abdominal muscles, and also you can draw up on the muscles of the pelvic floor. It's called close the mulata, and it's to help bring energy up from the root chakra on up the spine. So squat is very great. To the spine. Yes, very great for the hips and the knees, and a nice pose to spend time with, but if it doesn't feel good at first, just Practice it for a few breaths and move on, and you can gradually increase the amount of time that you feel comfortable spending in each asana. We'll bring the hands to the floor, slowly raise the hips, bring the feet into parallel, relax the back, knees a little bent as you hang. You can also sway here a little bit. Stretching. Lock your head, yes and no. Take your time rolling up the spine. So this next exercise we're going to do, I just call circles. And this is something I like to do almost every day. So first of all, the most basic pose in yoga is our mountain pose, Tadasana. Feet parallel, arches of the feet lifted, toes spread, knees soft, hips level, shoulders over the hips, arms just hanging, palms and fingers open and soft, ears over the shoulders. So if you turned and looked in the mirror, you would see that you're making a nice straight line all the way down the body, and that's what we're going for. So a nice, relaxed, centered feeling where everything is in really good alignment. Can I see you? I think so. And so that is our most basic pose in yoga, from which everything else is built. So it's really good to work on this. You can work on this any every day, waiting in line at the grocery store, or whenever you're standing around. You can just check in and notice how's your posture. Are you carrying yourself at your full height? So that's really important to pay attention to. We'll go ahead and make a circle with the nose. I that's saw, I saw a bee in front of the nose. Doesn't have to be a big circle, especially at first. Make it nice and slow, just relaxing the neck. We carry a lot of tension in the neck. It's really a good thing to do every day is relax the neck. And the shoulders, big shoulder rolls. We can go 
with the shoulders together, moving back and front. Or we can do one shoulder and then the other, let the body follow that movement, letting the whole body be relaxed, flowing with that movement both ways, in front and back. Elbows, making a circle, we call this wafting the incense. You can imagine your favorite incense or flowers. No, I'm doing different things. Breathing, go both ways. You can always do things your own way in yoga, it's your practice. We'll do fingers and wrists, making a circle. And we'll bring the hips into a circle. I bring my feet apart a little, and this could be a small circle, or nice and big. Yes, breathing. Feel the sensation, so notice how it feels as you move the hips at different angles. challenge in this one, you can also do it with the heels lifted. So knees making a little circle, feet grounded or the heels lifted, both directions. And we'll do ankles, toes, feet, fingers. Now that we have all the joints a little warmed up and moving around, we're going to go into a little meditation exercise. So here's another place where our cushion is really useful. We're going to use the cushion for a supported back arch. It's nice to just melt down to the floor, bending the knees and coming down slowly. And you're going to place the hips right at the short end of your cushion. And again, you can use a pillow at home for this. Maybe a sofa cushion would be good, something firm with some support. And you want to support your whole back. So notice as I lay back, my whole back comes onto the cushion and my head is supported. And you can choose what position you'd like for your arms and legs. So the arms could be quite wide, the knees can be up, that feels really nice and natural. The feet can be wide with the knees in, or the knees can be open with the feet together for a butterfly or a reclining cobbler pose. The arms could also be overhead, that's a bigger shoulder stretch, or even resting the whole backs of the hands on the forehead. So once you get nice and comfortable in this supported back arch, we're going to just lie here and breathe, focusing on the movement of the breath and letting the back and the body relax. Let the breath flow smoothly in and out the nose. So that the breath and the heartbeat become the main movement in the body. Completely relaxed and at ease. Let's do a very nice exercise to do at the end of a long day. Relaxed. 
Exhale, make two fists and squeeze the whole arm. Squeeze. Exhaling as we squeeze. Inhale, relax. Let the arms soften. You can press the shoulders back into the mat. Inhaling, press and squeeze the shoulders back.
Namaste. The divine spark in me recognizes and honors the divine spark in you. The divine spark in me.